Hey everyone, Elisa with Jots Designs. In this video, I make personalized sign. As I was making this, it seemed like something went wrong at every step, and you'll see some of them, um, but first let me show you the products that I started with. I got these wood pile two and a half inch wood letters and whitewash rectangle sign from Hobby Lobby. The stickers tend to rip off the finish on the letter, so keep an eye on that. And you can often find both the letters and the sign on sale. The sign comes ready to hang, so there's no extra work or parts needed for that. I needed to seal between the frame and the back piece, so I used some clear silicone. This was where my first mistake was. This is waterproof, and when I go to paint it before adding resin, the paint really doesn't stick to the silicone. If you want to paint it, I would definitely suggest making sure you get the paintable kind and it will say it on the packaging. I have the tip cut at an angle and I used a shaped silicone brush to smooth and remove excess and then I just let it dry. I spray painted the letters black and I will use some dichroish film from Little Windows and you can get them in two different sizes. I chose two of the larger ones and I'm going to adhere them together with this double sided tape. Each film can look different depending on the color that is behind it, so make sure you try different backgrounds to see what you like best. I started by crinkling them up in my hands until I was satisfied with the texture, and crinkling gives it such a different look and dimension, so try different things with it. I cut some of the double-sided tape down to size and attached the pieces of crinkled film, and I flattened each of them with my acrylic roller, and I love how they look together, both on black and white backgrounds. I had a hard time um, deciding which color I wanted as the background. Then I trace each letter onto the foil and I add more of the double-sided tape to what I wanted as the backside and cut the letters out. I'm certainly not the best at cutting things out, but I got it close enough. Then I peeled off the backside of the tape and attached them to the letters and then trimmed off any excess. Not really well, but they got on there. Okay, so I'm going to pause it right here and explain the biggest mistake that I made on this one. I had wanted to go with a marble background and it was going great, but my mistake was using my heat gun with a frame like this. It's been quite a while since I've done something in a tray or a frame without using silicone oil and I just wasn't thinking and I used my heat gun. So it basically all just ended up blending together and going towards the middle and it can totally still work for something, but it just wasn't what I was wanting for this piece. I used ClearCast 7050 resin for both the marble layer and what I'm using to cover it up. Uh, it's a two to one ratio resin, so make sure you keep an eye on how you measure it when using it. And I use uh, three ounces for every layer that I do on this piece. I will be using Lorez Expressions Angel White and Jacquard Perlex Pearl White Powder. I want an opaque white with a good amount of sparkle and a metallic white paste would be perfect, but I don't have one, so I basically just make my own. After spreading that around, I wanted some extra sparkle on top, so I took some extra fine crystal diamond glitter that I got from Walmart and just sprinkled it lightly over the entire piece until I was happy. I know it's hard to see the sparkle on these because I actually have my lights set up to avoid light reflections as much as possible when I am arting and making videos, um, but hopefully you can see some of it while it's zoomed in here. I waited about an hour to an hour and a half to add the letters. I use resin that's left in the cup or drips on the table to determine if it's the right time. For this, I wanted a good tacky and stringy resin. I made marks on the tape to help guide me, starting from the center and then each inch out from there. I used them for the first letter, but then of course promptly forgot about them after that. And then I added this little heart that I made with some UV resin, dichroish film, and resin tint. I will link that quick video I made on that in the description, so definitely check that out too. I did try to line up the letters evenly, but either the A moved while curing, like the little heart did, or I just didn't do it that well. Um, next time, if I wanna make sure the letters stay straight, I will actually wait for the resin to cure, tack the letters down with some super glue, and then pour the clear layer. Once this clear layer was cured and I took off the tape, I found my next big mistake. I should have taken the tape off while the resin was setting up. Since I didn't, the resin stayed pushed up 
on the tape in the corners and it cured that way. The best way to fix it is with more resin. So I had to do another clear layer. This time I took the tape off before it was cured, but there was already some seepage um, underneath the tape on the wood that also now needed to be fixed. I could have stained it with a darker color to hide that, but I decided to use some UV resin over the frame. I could have used more epoxy, but due to the unevenness of the wood and edges, I figured I would have had a harder time keeping it from going over the edges while it cured. So I grabbed my favorite J Diction UV resin, which I also have in a black nail polish bottle so that I have a dedicated brush when I need it. It worked perfectly to spread the UV resin around and make sure it didn't go over the edge. I cleaned up any that went onto the cured resin with a Q-tip and alcohol before putting any UV light on it. Because the wood is not sealed, I ended up doing three light coats to get the thickness that I wanted because some of it of course seeped into the wood until it was sealed up. Using my 36 watt lamp with removable tray, I was able to get all the sides cured by setting the lamp over the ends and then also holding it over the middle while that section cured. Despite all the mistakes and issues that I had with this piece, I think it turned out pretty great. I hope you guys like it too, and definitely please let me know in the comments. Support the channel by giving the video a thumbs up and subscribe if you'd like to keep up with my new videos. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.